MZTV. What is the deal with our Lord saying in Matthew 24, 34, King James Version, watch out now. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away till all these things take place. What things? Why? All the prophetic utterances he made right before this, they are many. I will go through them. You know them by heart, probably. The Son of Mankind shall come in great pomp and fanfare. As the light shines forth, and the earth will grieve, stars will fall, all these amazing events that will happen at the same time of his coming. Where is it? When did it happen? Some people think it already happened because they look at this translation and they think, well, Jesus said this generation will not pass by. And then the questions, see, if you get a bad translation and you start reasoning from a bad translation, you get all sorts of rabbit holes you go down into. Like, well, the, that, the kingdom must have come then. It must have come then. then. And, and that breeds this terrible lie known as preterism that says, yeah, the kingdom did come then. But in order to say that, you have to believe that the thousand years started, that there was peace on earth, that the wolf was lying down with the lamb, uh, that Israel was ruling the earth, that iniquity was taken away from Jacob, the earth was restored to Edenic perfection. Uh... When did that happen? Did anybody ever remember reading about that in history books? I took world history in high school. I never heard anything about it. And then even more crazy than that, if the kingdom is a thousand years, then, because you see, these people, the preterists believe that the kingdom did come in 70 AD when Titus of the armies of Rome sacked Jerusalem, burned up the temple, tore it down, and the people got scattered all over the place, and it was a terrible thing, awful. Josephus talks about it in his voluminous accounts, but to say that that constituted the events of the unveiling of Jesus Christ, you really have to have a rich imagination, or as I would like to say, you have to be completely stupid to think that 70 AD was the book of Revelation. A third of mankind being killed, stars falling from heaven, rivers turning to blood, the seas being spoiled, 90-pound hailstones, 200 million supernatural cavalry coming forth from the submerged chaos. No, you, you really have to just allegorize the entire book of Revelation. But these are the lengths people will go to because of a bad translation. And then people will argue, what does he mean by this generation? He must mean the generation that exists when these things start happening, a future generation. But, but then, a, a future generation. But then people say, well, why did he say this generation? Maybe he didn't mean this. And so on and on it goes. And I'm going to read from a website known as raystedman.org. It's named after a guy named Ray Stedman. I don't know this guy. I don't know anything about these mainstream Christian expositors, but you're not going to believe what he says this generation means. Talk about a twist. I've never heard this one. This is a new one. For all these problems are solved. All these stupid rabbit trails can be abandoned. Leave it to the rabbits. Let's abandon them when you get the right translation. And I'm going to give you the right translation today. And it's going to tie in beautifully with yesterday's message and being the prophetic type I have a feeling it's going to tie in with the message I'm going to give tomorrow. This is Martin Zender. You're at Martin Zender Television, MZTV. I'm thrilled to be with you every day. This is a great time of fellowship for me, and I know it is for you because you've told me so, and I need you to tell me. Keep telling me how much you love this show. Keep telling me how much you love me. I love it when you love me. I love you too. I really do. We have a great bond over the miles through this amazing technology. So... Let's review what our Lord said would happen at the time of his coming. Verse 27, Matthew 24. 
I'm reading right now from the concordant version. Then I'm going to go to raystedman.rabbithole.com. For even as the lightning is coming out from the east and is appearing as far as the west, thus shall be the presence of the Son of Mankind. Wheresoever the corpse may be, there will the vultures be gathered. Now immediately after the affliction of those days, he's speaking of the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not be giving her beams and the stars shall be falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of mankind in heaven and then all the tribes of the land shall grieve and they shall see the son of mankind coming on the clouds when did this happen in 70 a.d and they shall see the son of mankind coming on the clouds of heaven with power and much glory oh, i wish i'd have been there for that sorry i missed it verse 31 and he shall be dispatching his messengers with a loud sounding trumpet and they shall be assembling his chosen from the four winds from the extremities of the heavens to their extremities verse 32 now from the fig tree learn a parable jesus is now going to talk to his disciples about the timing from the fig tree learn a parable whenever it's bow may already be becoming tender and the leaves sprouting out you know that summer is near Thus you also, whenever you may be perceiving all these things, know that he is near at the doors. That phrase, at the doors, what does that remind you of? Yesterday, I told you that in Israel's history, twice in Israel's history, they were at the door of a promised land. In the wilderness, coming out of Egypt, they were at the door of Canaan. And in the book of Acts, after our Lord's death his entombment and his resurrection they were at the door of the 1000 year kingdom but in both cases they were turned away for their unbelief but in the future israel will receive him because the tribulation the trials that will come upon the earth will afflict them and harrow their hearts and god will finally bring the new covenant to them that is he will replace their stony hearts with a heart of flesh and he will make them, forcefully, make them become faithful. That's the only thing that's going to get the job done. Can't count on them. Just like you can't count on us to become members of the body of Christ. So he's telling them to look. He is near at the doors. Verily I'm saying to you that by no means... Okay, and I'm going to read verse 34 from the King James Version, which I... Just did at the beginning of the show. I'm going to read it again. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass by till all these things take place. Now, here's what Ray Stedman thinks. I'm quoting now from RaySteadman.org in his article titled A Thief in the Night. Ray C. Stedman. No idea who this guy is. Typical Christian teacher. Many have wondered exactly what he meant by these words. Did he refer to the generation to which he was speaking, i.e. the disciples and their contemporaries? Or did he perhaps mean the generation which would be alive when the events he predicted will begin to be fulfilled? If that is what he meant, he would have been saying that when these events begin, they would be completed before the generation would pass. Each of these meanings has been suggested as a possible explanation of his words. And now Ray Stedman makes an epic pronouncement of great error. Ray C. Stedman says, but the truth is he meant neither of these. Because of course, if he meant the disciples' generation, then his words have long ago been proven false. Unless you're a preterist, <laughs> then you just you just squint and turn your head like this and yeah i can see how all those things happened in 70 ad yeah, yeah. it's kind of like they were all fulfilled only like not really fulfilled just kind of allegorically metaphorically at least i give stedman credit for for this if our lord was speaking of that generation but i'm telling you this he was speaking of that generation i'm going to give it to you where do you see this 
At least Stedman says it. Well, obviously, if Jesus was speaking of that generation that was listening to him speaking, the disciples in their generation, then his prophecies have been proven false. At least Stedman acknowledges that none of that stuff happened. And no amount of rich imagination or LSD could convince anyone that they actually did happen. And the second explanation involves a very forced and unnatural meaning for the word this, kind of like Bill Clinton with the word is. Yeah, what did he mean by this generation? What did he mean by this generation? Maybe he meant a future generation, the generation which shall actually be alive when these things do take place. But that doesn't fit with the word this because he was speaking to his contemporaries and he said, this generation. Well, he actually did say this. And the generation he was speaking of was that generation, the contemporaries of his disciples. So you're like, Sender, you're going to have to pull a rabbit out of your hat to show us how this makes any sense whatsoever. Well, I do pull rabbits from hats. I don't go into rabbit holes. I pull them from hats. It's much classier, and it makes more sense. The truth is, he meant neither of these. Here's what Stedman, if you wanted some entertainment, maybe pop some popcorn, put this on pause, pop some popcorn or refresh your, your coffee, pour another bowl of cornflakes there at your breakfast table, and listen to this. It is almost certain that this is what the Lord meant, for he used the word generation in this very sense in the previous chapter. That is, that the generation was referring to the indestructible people. This is the title of his heading, the indestructible people. It's almost certain that this is what the Lord meant. What do you mean it's indestructible people? Well, let's go on just for entertainment's sake. He was speaking in severe and sharp tones to the Pharisees, and he said, you serpents, you brood of vipers. Goes on about that. Goes on about that. Truly I say to you, all this will come upon this generation. The Lord surely did not mean by this that the Pharisees and their contemporaries would bear the blame for all the injustice of the ages. No, he meant that, I, I, I can't even follow this. He meant that Israel was the nation chosen to be the instrument of God to teach the whole world what he is like. When Israel failed, it became culpable for all the dire results that failure brings. It is the nation which was in view when he used the term this generation. Did you hear that? It is the nation which was in view when he uses the term this generation. What, Stedman? I would think that if it was the nation of view, our Lord had a word, a handy word, namely nation, that he could have used here. This nation shall not pass away till all these things should be occurred. He had a handy word available to him, namely the word nation. But he didn't use that word, did he, Ray? He used the word generation. But in Ray C. Stedman's creative mind, well, he said generation. We all know what a generation is, the lifespan of a human being. The contemporaries within that lifespan, general human lifespan of 40, 70 years, whatever you make a generation. We all know what a generation is. But Stedman has to get creative here because he's working with a bad translation and he doesn't bother to find out what the right translation is. As I have told, he assumes the King James is the right translation. And as I have told you many times, if we're going to argue about what God said why don't we figure out first what God said? So, many, so much time, so many words, like in this article, so many words are wasted trying to explain a bad translation. They're arguing about things God never even said. That's bad form. Very bad form. I'll finish this out. But first, I've got to read this again. It is the nation which was in view when he used the term this generation. Well, thanks for explaining to us God's explanation. Throughout 20 centuries of dispersion and persecution, a most remarkable demonstration of the truth of the Bible has been the Jewish people and their uncanny ability 
to survive as an identifiable race. Yeah, but that's true. But this is bait and switch. You baited us with generation and then you switched out generation with nation. And now you're telling us all about how Israel is the indestructible nation as if that's the topic at hand. It's not. You did the bait and switch and now you're elaborating upon the switch. Oh, the Jewish people, uncanny ability to survive despite the long centuries of hardship and cruelty. See, now he's got everybody involved in this. Oh, yeah, it's true. Uh, Ray Stedman, he's correct about that. Wow. Uncanny ability of this nation to survive as an identifiable race despite the long centuries of hardship and cruelty. They have proven to be an indestructible people. So I guess Ray C. Stedman is correct. No, it was a bait and switch. He's got you convinced by a sleight of hand by just stating that generation is nation. He just states it and assumes everybody's going to go along with him, which they probably do, except for me. I don't go along with this. Despite the long sound, okay, the fact can constitutes proof that what Jesus predicts will surely come to pass. Bait and switch. The fact constitutes, that fact that is of the indestructible people, says Ray C. Stedman, constitutes proof that what Jesus predicts will surely come to pass. But that's not what Jesus predicted. He didn't say, he didn't say, truly I say to you, this nation will not pass away till all these things take place. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the concordant literal New Testament, the most accurate translation available to date, I bring you a proper translation of Matthew 24, 34. Steal yourself. Maybe you might not see this at first, but I will elaborate before the show is over. Verily, I am saying to you that by no means may this generation be passing by till all these things should be occurring. There it is. Do you see it? As always, our Lord is in the relative perspective. He laments over Israel for not believing in him. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how long I wish to gather you as a mother hen gathers her brood, yet you would not. And so he's in the game with his people, and he is not taking the absolute viewpoint. Of course, he knows, even while he's lamenting over Jerusalem, he knows that it is God, his father, who's giving them a spirit of stupor. Of course, he knows that. And yet, he's in the game. And he's telling that generation that by no means may, that's the, a key word there, by no means may this generation be passing by to all these things should, that's even more of a key word, should be occurring. In other words, these things should be occurring. But behind this phrase, not too far behind it, you can see it lurking in the shadows, is a contingency, it is an if-then proposition. And it was dependent just this generation should be entering. This, gener this generation that I'm speaking to should be entering, just like the generation that approached Canaan should be entering. Let's plug in the Canaan situation. Verily, I'm saying to you that by no means may this generation, that is the generation that came out of Egypt, by no means may this generation be passing by. By no means may in other words, may this not be occurring. In no means may this generation be passing by to all these things should be occurring. He's not saying in either case that it will be occurring. That's where the King James says. The King James, let's review again, says this generation will not pass away. What a difference between this generation will not pass away and by no means may this generation be passing by. And the second part of that is the King James says, till all these things take place, till all these things take place. But the proper translation is from the concordant literal New Testament, till all these things should be occurring. And the construction here in the Greek is a classic contingency. It's an if-then proposition. This, this generation should be going right into the kingdom. By no means may... This generation be passing by till all these things should be occurring. But there was something left 
unsaid, but in the subtext suggested that Israel had a part to play. Again, this is the relative perspective. Israel had to, as a nation, not just a few good Israelites here and there, Israel had to accept her Messiah. So how appropriate now are the words in verse 36? Now concerning that day and hour, no one is aware, neither the messengers of the heavens nor the Son, except the Father only. Concerning that day and hour, no one is aware. That's a strange thing to say when the thing was at the door. Why would you say no one is aware of the day or the hour when it's really at the door? Because our Lord knows that they're going to reject it and it's not going to happen. Mind you, he's still alive at this time. He's not preaching post-resurrection. He hasn't gone to the cross yet. So relatively speaking, this thing's still on the table. It's all still on the table. In a way, for 40 years, it's all still on the table, even though everybody knows, we know with hindsight, God knows. Paul probably knew that it ain't happening. We're going to give him all these opportunities. We're going to show over and over again through this Acts administration that Israel wants no part of it. They want no part of it. But we're going to make it official with Paul where he announces again, it wasn't a new declaration that uh, you have refused it, Paul says to the leaders of Israel who came to visit him in prison. You've refused it, therefore we're going to the nations. Of course, they already went to the nations years and years and years before that, but this was a final pronouncement of it. Just so Israel's going to have no excuse. They're going to say, well, you never said anything about that we had to like accept it. And they're going to roll the film, roll the film, and they're going to see all their opportunities, speaking in the relative, all their opportunities to believe. And if you want to say it, they had one last opportunity. They visited Paul in Rome. Paul knew. I'm just going to make it official here. Going to give them another chance to step on their own destiny, to hang themselves, to screw themselves out of their greatest aspiration, which is the thousand-year kingdom. Oh, boy, they just messed it up so many different ways. So many different ways. You and I know the secret. Secret. It really was a secret. That There was a secret administration, another secret. I talked to you about the secrets before. Secret of the timing of Israel's blindness. These things should be occurring. See, they should be occurring. Didn't say they would be occurring. They should be occurring. But he follows it up with no one knows the day or the hour. That's strange. If it was ready to be, to come right then, he would have Open the wine bottles. None of this. No one knows the day or the hour. Why would he say that if he knew that on the day of his resurrection would be the day that the leaders in Israel, the Sadducees and the Pharisees would all be celebrating? This is it. That's our Messiah. He rose from the dead. Amazing. No, they're still out, out there saying that, oh, the disciples must have stolen the body. The disciples must have stolen the body. Where'd you hear that from? Ray Stedman? 